Okay, uh, it's recording. Okay. Hello. Hi. <laughs> can, you please, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, so uh, my name is Danny, Danny Hines, and I'm actually a zoology major, uh, a concentration of biology. Uh, and I am a junior, and I am from Floyd's Knobs, Indiana, which is like very southern Indiana, right across the river from Louisville. And can you explain how you got into this class? Like what? Yeah. What interested um, you? It was um, obviously it was just I had to take a, any uh, honors one ninety nine class. But I had already taken on a class with Dr. Bartlett, and I really liked uh, what he taught and stuff. And then with, um, with Black Lives Matter happening, you know, right before I signed up for classes, I really, um, I just really thought it would be good for me to take it. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I have for that one. Okay, so did you have any expectations? Did you expect anything from this class? Um, so like I said, I already took one of Dr. Bartlett's class, uh, classes earlier, sorry. And I, I wasn't sure how it was going to work this time. Cause you know, it's a entirely different like topic, but I figured we'd be doing a lot of, um, like reading and, and research. Cause that's kind of how his other class was. Um, can you tell me what, what other class, the other class you took? Oh yeah, um, it was honors one ninety or one eighty nine. Um, oh. Yeah, and that class was called global inequalities, um, and and so it would be about a lot of things as well. Um, we talked about like borders a lot and things like that, um, and economic inequality between countries or just in our country. So the two classes do like intersect a little bit because. Uh, you know, race can affect those things. And that's what we talk about in this class a lot, so. Yeah, it's, it relates to racism, basically. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever think about race and racism while growing up? Um, I, I'm sure I did. Um, you mean like as a, a kid mainly, I guess? Um, yeah, like, do you ever feel like, oh, I'm different from this? Um, to this person because I look different or something like that. Yeah, definitely not, I guess, at least when I was very young because, you know, I am white and I grew up in a very, very, very uh, white area. Um, so um, I, I guess I obviously knew it was a thing, um, but I didn't think much of it um, because... We also are, are kind of like, we don't like, as a child, it's like hard to see that racism is a thing, I guess. Um, for me, uh, that that could be very different depending on your upbringing, where you're from and anything like that. Yeah. Um, but I was sort of taught that it was kind of over, I guess. And I didn't really have any reason around me to think otherwise because I didn't see it or at least start to notice it until maybe I got older or uh, was educated, I guess. So you said you grew up with basically white, um, in a white neighborhood. So mm -hmm. like, what were the conversations like? Like maybe you saw, maybe your parents or your family saw something on the TV. Like what was the conversation like if you can remember? Um, I don't my parents are both very like passionate about anti-racism i would say but i don't really remember them doing you know i don't remember any conversation when i was young uh but i would say what i noticed from living in there is that i don't want to say we would like pick on kids who were different but um it just like you you know they stuck out, I guess, not in a bad way, but you just knew, you know what I mean? Because there were only a few of them. And so um, I'm sure people got teased, not in like a 
incredibly racist way, but, you know, like asking them questions that probably made them uncomfortable. They probably got overwhelmed. Um, I do remember that as a kid. Um, and that is definitely something that I guess you maybe don't think about when you're a kid, um, how that would affect people. But yeah. So um, when did you start thinking about race? Like when did you start um, knowing about racism? Like knowing more into more about racism? Um, I would say there's like probably there were probably multiple points. Um, a couple of my best friends growing up were, were Asian. And so I, that relates to my last question, I guess. Um, I kind of saw how people treated them, not necessarily racist, but, you know, asking kind of like microaggressions type things, asking people where they're actually from and things like that. And I saw that and I was like, oh, um, like that's kind of strange. It, it's something, you know, that you see for the first time, I guess. Um, and so I had a perception of race from that, from seeing their families and seeing how their cultures were a bit different than ours and, and how people treat them at school and things like that. And then, um, like I said earlier, um, I feel like I kind of grew up with like a little bit of a facade that racism wasn't a thing because I was I lived in an area where I could have the privilege to believe that way. Um, and I'm sure there were multiple again, but I mean, really just this year was a pretty big awakening for how, how we really still have a lot of work to do with anti-racism and things like that. Um, so yeah, pretty recently, I guess, is the answer for that. So you can say your um, observations this year and the observations about your Asian friends actually helped shape your views about racism? Yeah, um, for sure. Because, um, you know, if I didn't have my friends, uh, I would I would never have been open, like, see, I would have never seen their viewpoints or anything like that. Um, and then, of course, this year as well, yeah, um, if those events didn't happen and and I didn't uh, educate myself on them and, and try to reach out to other people, not necessarily reach out to other people, but be opening to listen, actively trying to listen to other people, sorry. Um, then yeah, yeah, that definitely changed the way I think and things like that. So how did the event, this event of 2020, how did it affect your like view about racism and how it affects your neighborhood, like your family's views about racism? Do you think it changed? Do you think it, yeah, how does it affect that? Um, it, it depends, I guess. Um, like my immediate family, I would say, has probably had a pretty uh, experience like similar to myself um, where it just made them want to educate themselves more and then they were kind of maybe a little taken back by you know, how bad things still really are, I guess. Um, but um, I'm sure I have some, you know, f maybe not family members, but people in my hometown, I guess, who either still don't care or have some kind of thing where they don't support the movement or whatever, um, unfortunately. Um, but I guess even at that point, at least it's still a talking point you know, like people are seeing what's happening and, and we're having the conversation again, so. So this year, have you been, um, have you been involved in any anti-racist activities? If so, how were you involved? Um, so a few, I guess, um, I, the biggest one, I guess would be educating myself one obviously from this class um which this class is really really great at that um I wish that everyone who went to college could take this class um and and also you know I'm sure you've probably seen like on social media there's people who are sharing lots of things and have been um for most of this year and just trying to 
actively listen to people more than I used to, I guess. Not that I wouldn't before, but maybe going out of my way now to do it myself. Um, and then I've done a, f a few small things like um, I've donated to like a bail fund or two and things like that and, and tried to spread awareness for other fundraisers and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's uh, what I have for that pretty much. And what are your views about um, both states concerning race, racism and how they're like, how they help in anti-racism? Like, what are your views about both states? Um, so pretty similar to how uh, my perception on race changed growing up. Uh, it was probably something I never really thought about um, before before maybe I took this class and before um, that one event last year with the, the professor calling the cops on the student. Um, and I also probably had a little bit of like a lie in my head that it was better just because, um, as I said earlier, I was raised in a like majority white town. So there were actually more people of color here than, than where I'm from. So that kind of would make me think that like, oh, it's a lot better here. But um, the university does like, they try to do a lot. Um, and, you know, I'm sure people appreciate that and, and they're trying to do better. But uh, I do think that a lot of the times it just maybe isn't as genuine as they try to make it seem or they, they like to kind of say things and, and maybe they do try to back it up or sometimes it does just seem like they're trying to say things just to make people feel better, but not actually uh, have any actions to like reinforce that. So you said you're a junior, right? And you started freshman at Ball State. Mm -hmm. So do you think the Ball State's ways of addressing racism has changed over the years? Um, see, I, I like, I'm not exactly sure just because I don't really remember that much as a freshman or if, you know, there were any events that I was aware of as a freshman at least. But I would say um, just as tensions are kind of growing from from the election and other recent events, um, it does seem like maybe they're trying to be like more precise and, and respond a little faster and and be a little kinder, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, so they try to respond faster and and better, I guess, <laughs> if that makes sense. So do you think both states and ways creates a culture of belonging? Um, I think this is a hard question for me to answer since it doesn't necessarily pertain to me um, because so I have- From your observations. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense. Um, I think, um, I think they try, and so I think for a good majority, maybe it could be, but I don't. I think people would be completely validated and and not agreeing with that, um, because I have heard of uh, multiple incidents of. Um, of of things that happened that made people of color feel uncomfortable or unsafe or anything. So um, that's a hard question to answer. Um, so it's it's kind of yes or no. It really depends on the person. Um, it, yeah. But do you do you think they can do more? For sure, um, for sure. Um, and that's a hard question to answer. How I guess, mm -hmm. um, which we talk about a lot in this class, and we've had a lot of great discussions about that. But yeah, it's uh, it's really hard to get to a point where you could ever say uh, no, really. Um, but yeah, I definitely think they could do more. So aside from the 2020 events that happened, personally, how has this class helped shape your understanding about race? Like, how did, does this class affect you? Um, so for my understanding of race, um, one of the important things is when we talk about like the historical definition of race. Um, 
and how you know things like there's there's not a huge really at all um biological difference in race like in genetics um and that people throughout history have kind of redefined the term um it's a thing that humans have created um which is you know all, so crazy because it's like integral to society and the way we view people and interact and things like that um and then um i guess one of the most important things i learned from race is or, or about race in this class i mean sorry is like just how so many things can affect so many different people and you and you you don't know you know what i mean like mm -hmm. a lot of people are affected by different things um so it's really it's really important to just educate yourself about things and and try to actively listen to other people um and just yeah you never know like when something that you don't think about at all can be negative to other people in a different community and things like that so from this class from all the readings and discussions we had in this class what is one thing or one reading or one theme or one chapter that basically strikes you the most in your life? like the most shocking chapter to you from this class? Um, well, I will say, because I'll probably answer this in a question at some point, one of the most important things that I personally think about is how bad we're educated on this. Like, we really need to teach kids better about how bad race relations were in the history of racism and things like that. and. And I know we've talked about that in a reading, but um, in a reading, um, but I don't know if I remember a very specific one since it was always on my mind so much. So I guess I'll say a different one, um, which would have been the one that we've read the, or, sorry, <laughs> going on a tangent. Um, the section that we've read about like child protective services, um, because learning about how how the child, the various, because you know, they're different, they're called different things in a lot of states. Um, but how like the various child protective services services are like actually pretty, almost like predatory, I guess, on people. Like it instills fear in the community and it kind of traps people in this cycle of fear and of losing their kid and and like having to do things differently than they would. Um, I'm, that was a bad explanation of it. But yeah, um, I never would have thought about that if I didn't take that class, how, um, how, how that can be a negative thing for people. Because, you know, uh, like on paper, it's like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. But the way the way people are actually going about it is pretty harmful to a lot of communities. Um, so yeah. So what do you think it means to be anti-racist? Um, I think this is a big question right now, um, cause a lot of people don't understand this, but I guess uh, the very simple term would be like, um, just agreeing isn't enough. Like being like, yeah, racism is bad and, you know, never doing anything. Um, that's a start for sure, um, to think that, um, but it's really not enough because, you know, you hear about it all the time. Like uh like silence is complicit um it's just like it's just really important to be anti-racist to to educate yourself and to actually act upon the way you believe to to be anti-racist and constantly i guess um kind of be fighting against racism um because if you stay quiet then you kind of don't really get anything done can, do you think you can um, educate people like from your neighborhoods um, about how to be anti-racist? How do you think they're going to react to it? That's, yeah, that's definitely an interesting question. And that is something that I kind of struggle with myself because, um, you know, I'm from a more Southern area and unfortunately, like there are just racist people here. Um, Luckily, no one that I'm super close to is, is like that. Um, but I, th I think it's yes and no. Um, one, because I'm, you know, technically not qualified to, to teach people like that, but I can do my best to try. Um, 
and there's certainly so many things I've learned from this class and from talking to people and my friends or peers on campus um, about race. So, it, so it's yes and no. I do think I have a lot of things to, to tell people about race um, and how to be anti-racist that could be beneficial to them. But I do think there's other people who maybe just aren't willing to listen, unfortunately, so. Um, so where do you see the United States in, including one on both states and Muncie and Indiana, where do you see them in the next five to 10 years? Um, so Muncie, not exactly sure because I'm not super involved in the Muncie community. Uh, maybe I should be, but I don't do much of it outside of Ball State, I guess. Um, but, um, you know, students are so, so strong and, and, you know, students are doing a lot. And I see that uh, as a student and like, a, I also am a student, like I work on campus. So um, seeing it in the workplace and places like this and, you know, people protesting and things like that. Um, so I, I do think that the students will push uh, Ball State to do better. And I do think that maybe not instantly, but eventually we'll start to see those results. Um, not sure exactly how, but I think I think that it will happen. And hopefully the same for the US. Um, I think we're having discussions that people didn't know needed to happen. Um, but we're having them, not for good reasons, but um, I don't know. I do think that we'll have a uh, change, hopefully. I'm not sure how again, but um, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm optimistic uh, and hope that folks don't give up, and I don't think they will. So I think we'll see at least some positive change, maybe not as positive as others want, but yeah, I, I do think things will get a little better not sure exactly how. And where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Um, so, um, obviously I won't be in a class like this, um, I would assume. Um, but I do think that even if I don't remember the specifics of this class, you know, like the exact statistics in an article or anything that like that, that what I've learned in here will be impactful to me in 10 years still and that that I will remember it and try to be anti-racist um, because it is something that I personally do care about a lot. Um, and I, like I, I would assume in 10 years that I have like a career kind of job. Um, and I think that, you know, you can apply that things that we've learned in this class to anywhere you go. Um, so I would just hope that I would continue to apply the, the things I've learned and, and things like that um, to wherever I was in 10 years. So, yeah. And do you think other identities like gender roles, classism, religious beliefs, do you think they like from your experiences or observations, how do you think they affect racism and race? Um, so that's definitely a pretty big question. Um, and it, it, well, it, for one, it definitely does affect it. Um, so we can get that out of the way. Um, and I guess one of the biggest things that we talk about in this class is like intersectionality and how, how those things um, can kind of make people applicable for even more discrimination or racism um, if people apply to multiple terms, like like black women face different struggles than maybe black men, but they also face uh, some of the same struggles, but a woman would obviously have additional issues to face um, in addition to a black man and, and things like that and how um, we don't think about how just people are affected by multiple things, even even in addition to race. Um, and then I suppose it can also affect like, you know, religion and maybe different cultures or where you're from can also affect how you, you can view race differently maybe, or view sexual orientation differently and things like that. So, um, and, and that's what makes it so tricky to be anti-racist, I guess, or just, you know, make people come to amends, I guess, is, being raised different, having different different values, um, I guess, 
or being taught different things. Um, but yeah, they definitely all intertwine and and can affect the way people view things or the way people are treated. And then this class we talked about over generalization and mm -hmm. stereotypes. How have we ever experienced over generalization? Like it doesn't mean it view like give or over generalized. Like have you seen experience someone being over generalized and did that um did that thing um affect your perspective on the person or do you like how do you think it affects your perspective based on the stereotypes you need, you learned about them um so luckily i've never seen like a really really like offensive over generalization um i'm i'm sure unfortunately that they do occur but um i can't think of a good example off the top of my head um well, I guess, like I said, I grew up um, with a couple of really close friends who were Asian, uh, different nationalities, but um, like, you know, they they would get kind of microaggressions where people would think that, you know, they're good at math or whatever, or things like that. Um, or that, you know, because maybe they're Asian, they, they don't speak that good of English, but they, they do because they were raised in America their whole life. Um, and grew up speaking English their whole life. Um, so things like that, um, I have seen. Um, and you could, I, I guess I've also seen, you know, maybe like women, like women, cause I'm a STEM major. Um, so, you know, I see women in STEM and, and some people maybe think that they aren't as good as men or aren't gonna be as prepared or as successful in the field, but, um, they they have just as much likely to be excess <laughs> gosh that didn't make sense um they're just as capable as men um so yeah i see th little things like that all the time and unfortunately when it comes to stereotypes like that um you can see that some people maybe start to have a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy or things like that where they'll maybe start to like feel like they have to act that way or, or things like that um or it can just be, you know, overall negative for their mental health, unfortunately, or make them feel uncomfortable or you're not part of the community. Um, so yeah, uh, things over generalizations and stereotypes like that um, can start off harmless, I guess, or relatively harmless to the person who's doing it. Maybe it seems like that, but um, be pretty, pretty negative, unfortunately. So based on what you learned this semester in this class, what advice do you have for other students that want to take this class? Um, I would say if anyone wants to take this class, then they definitely should. Um, because I think one of the problems that we come into is how do you educate people who don't want to? <laughs> um, but obviously taking the class, um, you're already there and you you kind of are given an opportunity to educate people with the things you learn, which is great. Um, and I would encourage people to, uh, I guess you kind of have to get over a certain point of like being uncomfortable to talk about things. Obviously you need to be respectful of other people and what they're willing to say and not push them or anything like that. But we do talk about some pretty, I guess, unfortunate uh, maybe like scary things. Um, so you have to be prepared for that. Um, and you do have to do a lot of reading and a lot of research and, and work, um, which if you're in the honors program, you're probably used to. Um, but yeah, just be prepared to do some work and have some deep conversations. Um, you can't really like come in and and, and not really give a lot of effort in the conversation so you won't get very far. And then just be ready to listen to everyone and their different perspectives and and be kind and things like that. So. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, not much. I guess I'd just like to, um, to add one point that I kind of said earlier where I really think one of the most important things I've concluded from this class is that we need to like redefine how we educate people on race. Um, specifically, I guess younger kids, um, 
because we're just taught um that they just leave so many things out um and that is it's not necessarily my job to to tell people how you can do that um although i'm sure i could give a good argument on it from this class but yeah i think uh i think our education on these issues is really bad and it needs to change and i think that changing it would it would help people out a lot Thank you, Danny. Thank you for your time. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Bye. See ya.